Well, hello and welcome to Penelope's Chinwag. It's a chat with me, a fascinating fact, a little film of what's happened during the last week, some crafting and, well, I've had friends to stay. So this week you've got a little chat with my friend Jan. So I'm sitting here keeping warm in a very, very rainy southeast of England. Uh, it's not that cold, it's just dreary. So, my pleasure to come and speak to you. Thank you for joining me. Uh, thank you for joining me if you're a new viewer. And thank you for coming back if you're one of my regulars. And uh, a few regulars have been saying, where have you been? Because it's been uh, two Fridays that I haven't put a video up. But I had to have a word with myself. My energy was... Um, well, it was spent elsewhere, really. I visited my daughter, Kim. Um, I've been doing the usual things as well. And my friends have been to stay for the last week. So, chinwag was something that had to be put on the shelf. Looking after myself. I have an emotional purse. Uh, Long-term viewers will know about my emotional purse, but it's quite handy. It's obviously in my head. <laughs> and... It's about my energy. So I thought to myself, how much would it cost me to do a chin wag? Well, when I just look, I think it would cost me £10. At the time, it cost me £10. Other weeks, well, it cost me, you know, nothing. Well, just a bit. 10 shillings. I always do it in old money. Why do I do it in old money? 50p. But it would cost me £10 to do a chin wag. Oh, I thought, how much have I got in my emotional purse? Well, I had about £9. And that needed to be spent on getting the house ready for guests, on going to uh, get the train, see my daughter. And so, well, what was I to do? So chin wag is something that I can put on the back burner. And if I look in my emotional purse now, oh, I've got £15 because I've had a lovely time with my friends. We've stayed here, we've been doing crafting and I'll show you later in the little video uh, what she's been crafting. I've been helping her to do and she's gone away with some nice bits of fabric that she got from Smart Frogs which is um, a local lady, Alison, who I use to do my long arm quilting, which is quite new to me. I've always hand quilted, but finding it now, you know, a little bit heavy. And also, I very much like the effect of the machine quilting. So we pop round there because I've been making a quilt for my new great grandson, who's due in February, and I got it finished. So I popped it round to Alison's and I've chosen the design. Um, some people have said they would very much, they enjoyed the little bit of uh, sewing that I showed you last time. So I have got plans to show you how to piece together uh, in patchwork all the little tips that I've learned all over the years, hand done, um, to show you how to do a 12 inch square. Once you've learnt how to do a 12 inch square, I'll show you on the, you know, when I get down to it. If you put the 12 inch squares together, what, what sort of pattern it makes? Because, I mean, the world's your oyster. You can do a 12 inch square and then just make it to, well, I've got a Super King uh, bed quilt that I made some years ago with the same 12 inch square. Anyway, I'll talk all about that when I do it. And then if you're interested, uh, that'll be something for you to watch. I'm, I'm sort of sorting it out in my head at the minute. So we'll see how we go with that. Last time's video was all about connections. And I've had some lovely connections. Uh, especially with my friend down here. Oh, you know, this and that and this and that. And other people have said, well, that reminded me of this and that reminded me of that. And Libby from Utah. Um, I spoke about the film... Uh, chariots of fire and she said that uh, the memory she has conjured up by that is with her mom they went across the Grand Canyon and the touristy thing is that you get in the helicopter and 
she put it, I think, dropping off the edge. And as she was dropping off the edge, sitting next to the pilot, they played Chariots of Fire. What a memory that must be. You'd never forget it, would you? Going over the Grand Canyon in a helicopter with Chariots of Fire. So thank you for sharing uh, that memory and that connection with me. I love it. Absolutely love it. You just start off with one thing and it just spreads out. Spread the love, eh? So, yes, we've been out for walks when we can because it's been quite a rainy week. The beginning of the week wasn't too bad. Uh, so that's been lovely. We've been crafting, we've been eating, well, overeating. I've got, as you know, I've got an air fryer and I made a... A fruit cake that was so successful, a big fruit cake that you could wrap up and keep, but of course we couldn't we couldn't wait, so uh, we started eating it. Mind you, at the end of the week, it was lovely, so um, I'm going to do that, I think, not next week, because guess what? I'm going up to Scotland with my friend, my dear friend Heather. Her mum lives in Scotland. Well, she's Scottish. Her mum lives up there. So she's going to pay her mum a visit, as she likes to do quite regularly. And Pete said he'd stay here to be with my mum. And um, you'd think he was a son to my mum. He, They get on so well. So, yeah, I'm going to leave the two of them on their own. Goodness knows what they'll get up to. But I'm going to toddle off, and I'm going to go up to Scotland with my friend. So uh, I might have a video made before I go that I can put up. I might not. So if I'm missing, don't worry about me. Thank you very much. I, I, I'm, I'm planning on putting one up. We'll see. But if not, you'll, you'll hear all about my trip going to Perth in Scotland. So I'm really, I haven't been away. Well, it's three years in, in um, I went away February. 2020 with my daughter Nicola for a week to Norfolk and I'm glad we got that holiday in because since then uh, it well this coming up February it'll be three years since I've been anywhere so I'm rather looking forward to just getting on the train with my friend and doing some crafting and the six hour journey up there and just yeah getting away from it for a little while so I might see you I might not thank you for being concerned for all those that have uh, wondered where I was. I was looking after myself. You can't do it all, can you? You know, you just can't. Different things come up and you have to think, now what, what can I let go of? I didn't want to let go of Chimwag, but that's what I could let go of, so I did. So, um, oh, I'm just going to, oh yes, I'll put up the photos. Shall I put them up here? Yeah. So here are the photos of the quilt that I've done for my great-grandson who's due in February. And I went round to Alison's, who lives just round the corner, Smart Frog. If any of you have a quilt that you'd like to be professionally quilted, she does a beautiful job. So that's the quilt that I finished. As you know, I did it on point with Peter Rabbit and then just the little blocks so simple didn't take long so that'll be done and I'm knitting baby so hopefully that'll be finished by the time I see you next I'm knitting baby a little v-neck jumper quite modern it is navy blue ribbing with a sort of um what would you call it taupe camel body I'll show you that next time so what I did make um, for my great granddaughter Mila and I just wanted to get it ready for when I went up there to see her um, was a jacket and I've made a little film I just sat here before we caught the train and showed you it in, in real life if you like and then I took a little film when I was there of her trying it on I sweated on whether it would fit her because I hadn't seen her for a few months but it fitted her beautifully and she popped it on and she didn't take it off till we left. So I'm going to put that little film up here now. I put on one of those little labels as it's a jacket, a little handmade label. They wash beautifully. 
from So Sweet Violet. They really do wash lovely. And the buttons are handmade by um, Kate Emma, or Emma Kate. I think it's Emma Kate. I'll put it on the screen. Uh, and she works from the Isles of Scilly, which is where we like to holiday. Mm -hmm. And she does say that if you've got a garment, she will make your buttons bespoke exactly for you. So these buttons are handmade. I happened to buy them when I was there a few years ago and had them in my stash and I needed 10. It's the softest of wool. It's 60% merino wool and 40% silk, which means it's gorgeous, but Rowan have discontinued it. But my wool shop still has her, her stock done all the ends in so I wanted to show you I'm just hoping it will fit it's got a set in sleeve which means it comes across can you see that yeah um, and that's it so oh I just hope it fits there's the back And, of course, it's going to be doubly warm because you've got all the floats going across inside as you carry the colour across. So, yeah, you've got double the warmth, haven't you? But it's so light. Look at us in that picture photo. Where? There. Is that up there? And it woke me from a dream And in that dream I heard a warning Saying leave the rest, take only what you need So keep on singing to those who listen Oh, and at the end of the film, I show you my daughter. She taught herself to crochet, and I think it's a Sandra Paul uh, cherry heart blanket and a, a lovely little sh shawl that she made for herself. So well done, Kim. Yeah, who would have thought it? She's on her next blanket now. She's making out it. She's making it out of scapies wool, which she really likes. I wanted to show you this. I've just taken it off as I didn't want to lean too near. The detail on it is really pretty. Can you see that? And it's made by Faye Page, uh, a lovely girl who lives on St Martin's on the Isles of Scilly. She does the most beautiful jewellery. And I bought it there when I was, you know, holidaying on the Isles of Scilly. And I'm going to put up now... Mm. I'll see you in a minute. It's about the sea urchin. Fascinating fact. Using its five teeth, the sea urchin bores through rock to carve out a niche in which to hide. Despite the grinding and scraping, the urchin's teeth stay sharp. That's far more than we can say about any cutting or grinding tool we know and use, says Poopa Gilbert, Professor of Physics at the University of Wisconsin, Madison, in the United States. What's the sea urchin secret? A sea urchin's tooth is composed of crystals that are cemented together. However, there are breaking points at predetermined locations built into the teeth, notes Gilbert. The weaker material at these locations, like perforations on a sheet of paper, Make it easy for the tooth's worn layers to shear off, exposing a new, sharp edge. Since the tooth keeps growing at one end and self-sharpens at the other end, it never gets dull. Gilbert calls the urchin's tooth one of the very few structures in nature that self-sharpen. 
Knowing how the sea urchin's self-sharpening tooth works has exciting implications for tool makers. In theory, it could lead to the development of tools that self-sharpen with use. The mechanism used by the urchin is the key, says Gilbert. Well, that's fascinating, isn't it? What design uh, that, again, the scientists are trying to copy? A self-sharpening tool. So, so what? So, I know what I'll do. I'll put up the little film I made with Jan. And she tells you about her crafting. She shows you a bit of crafting. And uh, also, she was chatting to Mum. And I said to her, oh, that's such an interesting little story. I'm sure my viewers would like to hear it. So she agreed to, uh, yeah, just tell a couple of, ins couple of, um, well, she, well, I'll let her tell you. I'll see you in a minute. It's been round and you were telling mum some little stories, weren't yeah. you? <laughs> and I said, do you mind telling me my chinwag friends? So I'm going to ask you some questions, Jan. Right. <laughs> now... Queen's coronation. Mm -hmm. She was there, weren't you? I was there. And what happened? Well, this is a this is a trip down memory lane for me because Mum and Dad took me and my sister. We hadn't I hadn't got my brother then because there's a little bit of a gap between us, and we went and slept on London streets wow. to go and watch the coronation, and we were so excited. Sandwiches, a you know, flask, you know, all there little kind of blankets, of, you know, and it was a lovely atmosphere, people all happy and everything, but the only down, it, it was wet. <laughs> like today. <laughs> it was raining like yeah. today. But anyway, so the procession we could hear is starting, you know. So you were wet all night, you're all night long? I suppose we were, really, Okay. We? Mm. So on the streets, you yeah. slept there? We slept on wow. London streets. That must have been so exciting it as was a ex child. It was exciting. It was yes. lovely. Anyway, we could hear the procession. Mm. But by the time everybody had come onto the, the streets, a lot of people had come in front of us. So we were at the back now, so we couldn't see anything. <laughs> so mum and dad, I remember mum and dad kindly asking some people, could my girls just come in the front and just watch in the front, so they oh yes, yes, you know. So we stood in the front, and because everything looked enormous, being little, um, everything was enormous to us. And I remember seeing this beautiful golden coach pass by wow. with, the, with the Queen. And I was, I loved the band, I loved the music, you know, and I can just remember particularly that always used to make me laugh, the one with the great big drum, yeah. you know, it used to bang, 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 you know, and that would yeah. make me laugh. So that, that was a lovely the memory. The other memory I like that you were talking about, because you got married in 65, 1965, didn't you? we were 22, Bob and I, yeah. 22. Mm -hmm. And Jan was saying to Mom how your relatives have given you everything for the kitchen, gas fridge. Yeah, we had a little gas, uh, gas fridge. Yeah. And we did manage to buy a new cooker, but everything was second hand. We had like a second hand little table and chairs, um, second hand runner carpet that went up the stairs. A runner. Oh, yes. A so, runner. So you've yeah. got the bits either side. Either side, yeah. which we painted either side that's to make it look it. nice. <laughs> yes, that's it. <laughs> and the classic was in our little front room, we had newspaper on the floor as like a carpet to us because we just had bare, bare, uh, boards. bare boards yeah uh, bare boards are quite fashionable they're, now. they're unfashionable now yeah. but um then but of course when mum and dad and family or friends used to come round because you know newspaper gets scuffed doesn't it when you're walking on it we used to put fresh newspaper down which i thought looked really lovely <laughs> that is very sad isn't it no. <laughs> I just think it's amazing <laughs> because here paper. we are. We consider ourselves girls of the sixties. Mm. You got married sixty five. You yep. were twenty two. Yeah, and we were talking about connections in the last uh, chinwag, mm. and there's so many same flowers in the hair. Oh, we did this. We did that. I must say, we never had wallpaper. No, not wallpaper. Newspaper, newspaper. on the floor. 
and got excited about putting new ones. <laughs> <laughs> but you see, we're not even talking about like my mom, you know, during the war or mum was... I know. You know, we're talking about 1965 for you. Which isn't long ago, is no. it? And of course, when we did manage to save up, because we never had anything on HP, we didn't have a lot of money then, you know, so yeah. um, we used to save up for whatever we wanted. So we saved up to have a new carpet, a fitted carpet. And I still remember opening that door and thinking, wow, look at this, you know, feeling very proud, you yes. know, having our first carpet down. Yes. yes. That well, happy a milestone, memories. wasn't it? Mm, it was, milestone. Penny. It was. Yeah. yeah. But then I was thinking, you know, but now, why aren't people in the same situation? But we didn't have shops like IKEA. No. Or other, you know, reasonable mm. shops. It was either like Urko, very good furniture, or, well, what was there? Very you expensive. had to save up, didn't you? That you did. Yeah, there Which, wasn't that that, those, yeah. that furniture that you the could get very reasonably. No, 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 you didn't at all, did no. we? No. I mean, we had Pete's mum and dad, well, we still got it here, Pete's mum and dad's the dining tape. table oh. and chairs that they bought in 1930, oh. whatever it was when they got mm. married. Precious to still have that yes, penny. Yes, you're sitting yeah. having your breakfast on it, aren't yes, you, in here? Yes, lovely. So, yeah. So, happy memories. Happy memory memories. Lay, isn't do you it? remember seeing your dad uh, performing, doing a bit of drumming? That was one thing that I always regret because um, dad used to play in the evenings. Right. And my auntie used to come round and look after us when mum used to go out with dad and they used to have dinner and dances, you know. But yeah. I. I always would have loved to see my father play the drums. Oh, never right. got to see him play you the drums. You never got to see him. No, 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 and that's quite a sad memory for me because yes. I would love to have seen him. Yes, yeah, my darling dad. And did he? So did he do a day job as well? Yes, he did. Oh. He um he worked for Ever Ready. Yeah. Batteries. The, uh, no, as a as a rep. As a rep, mm. Ever Ready Batteries. Ever Ready Batteries, yeah, yes. Ever, as a rep, Ever Ready yeah. Batteries. And your mum yeah. was a hairdresser, wasn't she? Mum was a hairdresser, yeah. yes. All the family, there were four children, right. two girls and two boys, and they all went into the um, hairdressing business. Oh. And they actually had a salon between them. Yeah. Um, it's funny because the, the ladies' salon, you had just curtains in between, and I could smell this perm, this very strong oh, perm, yes. you know. And you could never never see anybody having a perm or their hair done because it was all very private, curtains all around them, you know. Not right. like today, you sit in the window, don't you, yes. and everybody sees you. Yes. And uh, the uncle and my uncles had the, the men's section, yes. Yes, yeah, uh, so it was like a hospital cubicle, wasn't it? It, it, it was, <laughs> a hospital cubicle, yeah. absolutely, Penny. Yeah, <laughs> you went to the hairdresser, you didn't expect anybody Never else see, to oh, see no. you with your hair You mustn't wet. see anybody, or oh, until you only should see them under those great big hood things, the yes. dryers, didn't you? Yes. That's right, the hoods, yeah. yeah. Oh, dear. Oh, well, oh, happy memories. Happy memories. So we've had a lovely week together, haven't we? We've had a love. always have a lovely time with now, Penny and Pete. I want I want you to show um, Chinwag viewers what you've been doing this week. I'll pop off and get it. <laughs> a lot of blood, sweat and tears because they're fiddly little things to make. <laughs> but she's done it. Look at this one. It's so pretty. Oh. So a uh, bit of Liberty fabric on the back and embroidered on the front. There's a, the light's going a bit now. Mm. And then when you unzip... All different fabrics inside, Liberty print inside. Mm. And then this one here. I think that's your favourite penny, isn't yes, it? Yes, I like the movement in that. It's got... But, and uh, this is a tilde on the back. Mm. Lovely, aren't they? And this one. It's pretty. Liberty. And the last one you did that was my first this one, one. Wasn't it? that was your first one with Tilda on the back. Mm. And it's just nice little gifts, aren't they, Penny? Yeah, I think to they're have, lovely little share. gifts. And then you, you're starting again, but you treated yourself some, to some silks. We went to the lady, the took beautiful, the, yes, beautiful <laughs> silks, yeah, absolutely gorgeous. Mm. Variegated. It's a lovely it. hobby if anybody yeah. wanted to actually start. Isn't and it, that really? is silk. It's not mm, cotton. Beautiful. It, it's silk. So, but two pound fifty for a skein mm. uh, at um, 
uh, smart frogs. So we took the quilt, baby quilt, didn't we? Took the we? baby quilt yesterday. Um, so uh, so Alison is shop. going to... Um, yes, lovely. Just a beautiful. nice place attached to her house. Lovely, lovely. But she sells these beautifully yes. variegated. So, uh. doing another one. <laughs> well, we better say... I've got the bug. Yeah, you've got the bug. <laughs> we say cheerio. Oh, bye-bye, everyone. Yeah, bye. Oh, bye. So, as you can see, the beginning of the week was a lot better than it is now. So, we were able to go down on the beach, walk into town, and, oh, yeah, it was clear blue sky, wasn't it? So, <laughs> that's it for this week. I think it's time I went. I've got... I've got quite a few things to do. Pile of washing, yeah, which means some ironing, doesn't it? And getting ready for my trip to Scotland. So I might see you, I might not. If I'm not here, don't worry. Thank you so much. And enjoy my little film, The Tide Was In. And when the tide's in, the birds will congregate uh, on the stones, waiting for the tide to go out. And a dog came along and they had a little fly round. So that's my film for this week. I hope you enjoy it. So I'll see you next time. Take care. Have a lovely crafty week if you're a crafter. And if not, enjoy what you like to do. Bye.